Hey, what's everybody? Adobe Masters here. And today I'm gonna be showing you how you can create some text message bubbles like this. And it's all gonna be created within Premiere Pro itself, meaning that we are not gonna be importing anything and we're actually be saving it so you can just drag and drop these in the future, which is really, really neat. So let's get started on this. It's a pretty advanced tutorial, but not too bad. So like I said, we're gonna be able to create them so we can drag and drop them in the future like this. First thing though we need to do is start over. I grabbed some footage from Envato Elements, a great subscription-based service where for a monthly fee, you can get a near unlimited amount of stock footage, just this person typing right here. So to start the effect, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to basically create a new sequence. So I'm gonna go to File, New, um, whoops, not Project Shortcut, but File, New, and Sequence. And I'm gonna go with 1080p, 30 frames a second. If you're specifically creating this for 4K or something like that, you may wanna go up to 4K. I am then going to go into the rectangle tool and we are going to drag out a nice rectangle here. We'll start with the blue one because that's what it's currently at. And if I click that out and then use these two tools, we'll center it like so. We then want to go over in the essential graphics panel. We have our shape up here. Let's just give it a name so we don't confuse it throughout this. It is the bubble. We're going to drag this rounded edge up until it looks good. It's an artistic choice right here. I'm gonna go right around maybe 95. We want to then go and actually create that little out indent area. So to do that, we're gonna go click on the, the shape layer, go to the left side into our effect controls, and we're gonna look for that shape bubble. And then we're gonna click on the path and then click on this. And that's going to allow us to then grab this and you might need to zoom in for this you can see that it's a little rough to get that plus button but right when you get it we want to grab a new point and we're going to grab that point outwards like so right now it is kind of rounded if we click on this and then the edges here and bring them in a touch what it will do is it'll make them nice and pointy and we will then go ahead and delete that extra click right there and what we have is a nice working bubble. Now, we need to do a couple of things with this. First off, let's make it so that it's 10 seconds long. It's a good time um, for whatever your frame is. We need to then go down into the opacity of this shape layer itself and bring this down to about 80%. That's gonna allow it to be see-through whenever we add it over. So next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna animate this in. So we're gonna click on this. We're gonna go to the overall, we wanna go to the vector motion right here. We're gonna scale this at 0% to start. Go forward about eh, 10 frames or so. We're gonna scale this up, and you're gonna notice something. We're coming from the center here. That can work, but let's go ahead and change that around. If we go to our anchor point and drag that to the bottom right, right where this is coming out, it's going to have it come from there. So let's go back to our animation here. We started at the zero, we went to the 100, and we're just gonna drag this up until it just reaches the edge of the screen, move forward two frames, go back to 100 and we have created a neat little transition or uh, a nice animation like so. Now, if we wanna make it a little bit more um, smooth, we can right click on this, go to Bezier, and then we can actually drop this down here. And if we pull this in just a little bit, and maybe you know out a little bit, we can have some fun with it. And you can see now it sort of stretches and comes in. And I like the look of that. So we're gonna keep with that. Okay, so we've gotten the first two steps done. Let's now add some text in. I'm gonna just click on the text tool and we're gonna start typing right here. So, hey, how are you? Now, what we need to do is we need to make sure that this text A fits inside the bubble and it looks good. I think that maybe, let's see, maybe it just needs to be a little bit smaller. So we're gonna drag this down just a little bit and then center it like so. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now, right now it's attached to everything. We kind of want it to have its own sort of character where it, it's, it wipes in like you're typing. To do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to actually create ourselves a group. So why are we creating groups here? Well, this allows us to take the, and I'm gonna name this to text. We're gonna allow us, us to take effects and apply to only certain layers. So now I'm gonna go over to this effect layer. I'm gonna look for an effect called wipe. It is gonna be under linear wipe, which is video effects transition linear wipe. We're gonna drag it to the right side here and it's gonna go inside the group. Make sure it doesn't go outside where it's above the folder like this, but inside like that. We're then going to go to our wipe angle. We're gonna change it to 270. This will allow us to create a left to right transition like so. 
we're then going to start at 100% here. So once the animation is done, right about there, we're going to start it at 100%. And, you know, however long you want this to be. I'm holding the shift key here to jump a few frames, uh, five at a time if you hold the shift while you click this. And that's a nice speed. So we've got the it coming in and then it writing. The last thing we need to do is we need to go back to our type tool. And if you would like to add that thing at the top where it you know, tells you the time everything's texted, we can do that right here. So we're going to just say, Josh, 3.05 p.m. We're going to drag that over here. Now, actually, what we're going to do here is we're going to take the Josh and we're going to make it right centered. The reason we're doing this is that in the future, we're going to change the name to something like, you know, Jessica or, you know, Joshy with a EY, it doesn't move the time around. So it makes it so that it is a um, easier to work with. And we don't have to keep reorganizing it and it'll make it more consistent as well. This is a little bold. I'm going to switch this down to regular. Again, these are all your artistic choices, what fonts you want everywhere. So we have that now. Last thing here is I don't like it to come in with the text like that. So we're going to have it right when this begins writing. We're going to go to that Josh text. We're going to go down, scroll down over here to that opacity, make that 0%, go forward a couple frames, bring it back up to 100%. And now what we have is, well, actually, that didn't work. Why did that not work? Oh, we forgot to turn on the little timer here. So right when this is starts animating, you need to click that stopwatch, start at 0%, go forward a couple frames, bring it up to 100%. And now we have our animation and it is looking great. So we have our animation, everything looks good on it. We are now going to go ahead and well, we need to export this. So what we can do here is to export this, we want to take our footage and we want to take uh, right click it like this and go to export as motion graphics template, like so. We're then going to look for, uh, let's name this one because I've, I've created this a few times now. I'm going to name this new blue text and click OK. It is going to export it. And the thing is, though, we still need a green on the other side. So to do that, what we're going to do is keep this open right here, the sequence here, because we've we saved it now. It's, it's ready to be used in the future. We need to create another group here. We're going to create a group and it's going to be named the bubble. Now in this bubble group, we're going to look for an effect. And this is sort of like just a little a little hack here. It makes it way easier for us to flip this. We're going to go horizontal flip, we're going to drag and drop that inside. And boom, we're now on the other side. Now this one isn't perfectly centered. So we just need to take the text and move it over a little bit. And now you're going to see that it's looking great. And what's great is with the horizontal flip, we actually sort of flip everything. Um, this needs to be moved as well. You can keep it on the right. I think it's probably best on the left though over here. And then we wanna make sure that we left align it so that when we type, it comes off the left. Um, you can, however, keep it on the right. It's all, again, a personal preference and you know, dev different devices do different things, different apps do different things. But let's have it go so it's completely reversed like that. Last thing we need to do, we need to change this color. This is supposed to be a green one. Go to our effect controls on the left side over here. We are going to look for that bubble, that shape bubble drop that down, change this color to really anything you want. A green works, you know, it's it's your thing. You can make it a red or a purple or a blue. We're just going to go with a nice light green though, maybe right about that color. Yeah, it looks good to me. And then we're going to right click on this and we're going to export this as a graphics template and it's going to be new green text. Okay, so now we have created both of them. Let's go back to our original sequence right here. We're going to go to browse and you're going to see I have a lot of them, which is why I created the new ones. I'm going to start off with this blue text, drag and drop that on. And you're going to notice that it's going to be way too big for what we want to do here. When we actually get it in here. Whoops, did not actually import that. So let's try that again. There we go. Uh, actually, no, we want the blue one, right? So we want to go to browse, new blue text, drag and drop that down. And funny, I don't think it's saved properly. So give me one second and I'm going to save it properly. Okay, so we're back. That was a little bit of a glitch on Premiere Pro's part. Um, it was not actually saving the blue properly for some reason. But anyway, here it is. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna click on that. We're going to go to the scale at the bottom here. We're just gonna scale this down 
and you can use the position markers right here to move it where you want. So I'm gonna go right up to here. Hey, how are you? We then go back to our browse and we're gonna look for our new green text, drag it up right about here and it's going to pop up really large as well. Now, since these were duplicated, what we can actually do is this is a scale of 37, which means this new one can also be a scale of 37 and they will be identical. Drag this one on over so that it lines up. And there we go. We now have text messages that are coming up. If we wanna change the text, it's all right here. So doing good. And then like that. And then you know this is probably from someone else, not Josh, so we change that around as well. Jessica, and boom, we have a completely created and beautiful text message scenario in Adobe Premiere Pro. Thanks everyone for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, throw in our comment section below at our website, adobemasters.net. If you like some videos, similar to this one, go ahead and subscribe button. And until next time, everyone, see ya.